church, get up on your feet this morning. God's grace is on our side. We're going to praise Him because of that truth this morning. Come on, let's go. Oceans of kindness, wave after wave. Mercy arriving again and again. Your love will find us. You're never far away. That's right. Battles behind us, battles ahead. God, you are for us. What stands against? We have this promise. You're never far away. Come on, believe that. We've seen his faithfulness. We've seen your faithfulness in the darkest night. We've seen your goodness, God, favor on our lives. Everywhere we go, your grace is on our side. Your grace is on our side. Come on. Battles behind us, battles ahead. Battles behind us, battles ahead. You are for us. What stands against? We have this promise. You're never far away. We see your faithfulness in the darkest night. We see your goodness, God. Favor on our lives. Everywhere we go, your grace is on our side. You're good. 
good father we praise you and worship you because of your goodness we continue to worship you this morning slipped up praise to you.
is reckless, but we know it's not, God. We know it's purposed. We know it's intentional. God, that you continue to love us is scandalous. It's crazy to us because we turn from you all the time, but you continue to turn us back to you because you love us. You're a good father, and we thank you so much for that love that appears reckless because it's undeserved, but that's the beauty of your grace, God. So we thank you so much as we reflect on that today. And God, we do pray that we would honor our mothers today, but in so doing, we would glorify you because ultimately, God, all goodness comes from you. And we thank you. We worship you. We praise you this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead and take a seat. Good morning and welcome to Compassion Church. My name is Tammy and I'm so happy that you decided to join us here today for Mother's Day at Compassion. We look forward to honoring and loving all of you mothers that we have here today. If this is your first time with us here at Compassion Church, please help us connect with you by grabbing a connect card from the seat pocket in front of you. Fill that out and just simply drop it off in the tithes and offering boxes on your way out after the service today. Or if you're joining us online, you can just text the word new to the number right here on the screen. We want to be able to connect with you even beyond the Sunday morning experience here at Compassion. So one of the best ways that you can get involved is by joining a team. You can do that today by visiting the first steps table in the church lobby. We'd love to have you here helping with our kids ministry, our music ministry, production, youth, or even our guest services team where you can help greet people as they arrive on Sunday mornings. This is not only a great way to serve Jesus together, but also to build new friendships with those that come out and serve with you on Sundays. Hey, Compassion Women, who out there needs a free hour of therapy? I know a lot of us do. We are so excited to give you an hour of self-care this Thursday night at 6 p.m. from the comfort of your own home. Join us along with Dr. Charity Byers, a Christian psychologist, as she helps us understand how four questions can give us awareness of what it takes to rise above any circumstance. Invite your friends. This is not just for our church. Register today at CompassionAZ.org. We can't wait to see you there. Every month, we partner with Causely to globally reach people with the hope of Christ. This month, for every two check-ins on Facebook, we help provide a meal for a child in need. Would you take out your phone and check in right now so that we can make a difference for those in need by bringing hope with the love of Jesus? When you check in, use the hashtag GiveMeals. At Compassion, we give cheerfully because God calls us to give cheerfully. It says so in his word. We are advancing God's kingdom one soul at a time here at Compassion, and we encourage you to remain faithful and cheerful in your giving so we can continue to make a difference here as his church. 
Hey church, I am so excited about Night of Worship here at Compassion. This is going to be epic and big, and we've got a big surprise for you on that night, so you are not going to want to miss this. We do have child care for those kids who are five and under on that night, and we encourage you, if you have kids older than that, bring them into the worship experience. Also, we are going to have food available for purchase at 6 p.m. here on campus, and then doors will open at 6.45 p.m. to come in for the worship experience. Again, it's, this is going to be awesome. It's going to be exciting. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you there May 21st. Thank you again so much for joining us here today for Mother's Day at Compassion. We hope you enjoy the service. Hey, 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 everybody. Happy Mother's Day. Let's give it up for our moms. Everybody put your hands together. Hey, you know what? I'm wondering if we have some moms out there. If you're a mom, would you raise your hand? All the moms out there. Now let's give them a real big hand right now. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. I tell you what, any moms out there and you've got a child who is like in the diaper stages. Any moms out there, you got a kid in the diaper stages. Yeah, I see. Hey, let's give them an extra hand right now, right? Any, any moms with teenagers out there? You got teenagers. I see some hands out there. Wow, we look up to you. We think, wow, you need some extra prayers. So let's put our hands together. Show some love for mamas today. Hey, man, I'm so glad that you've chosen to be a Compassion Church on this awesome day on Mother's Day. And today we're going to learn from the very best mom ever. Okay, I guess you would say that. She's the most famous mom in the universe her name is Mary, and Mary, if anybody knew what talking to Jesus was really all about, how many of you would say, Mary knew what it was like to talk to Jesus, like face to face? And today, I just think we can learn so much from Mary as she was talking to Jesus in John chapter 2. And so today, she's going to teach us all about talking to Jesus. I mean, after all, she talked to him for 33 years. She talked to him as a little toddler. She talked to him as a little boy, as a teenager. And then as a grown man, she was always talking to Jesus. And today, we're going to see how she was talking to Jesus in John chapter 2. And we are in this awesome series throughout the book of John. We're studying the whole book of John. And now we're all the way to chapter 2. We've been all the way through chapter 1. And just to give you some context of where we're at today in our study through this awesome book, we uh, first of all understand that John wrote the book of John. God inspired him through the Holy Spirit to pen the words of the Gospel of John. And he gave us the reason. He stated it in John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verse 31. The Bible says this is why John wrote this book but these things are written so that you may believe okay so this is why we look at this book today to build our faith anybody out there want your faith to be bolstered today you want your faith to be stronger well you're at the right place John wrote this book so that we would believe and that we could believing we could have everlasting life how many of you are glad that your belief in Jesus guarantees you eternal life in heaven can somebody praise God for that right there I thought so yeah hey, it says but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing you may have life in his name this is what living looks like believing in Jesus having everlasting life Having joy, man, I'm, I'm telling you, this is the good life. And so this is the purpose for John. And now in, in John chapter 1, he accomplished this purpose of trying to get us to believe by a lot of people running their mouths for Jesus. The disciples, like Andy found his family, Philip found his friend, Jesus found Philip. They were, people were talking, using their mouth, using their mouth for Jesus as a witness. Yesterday I was at a basketball game. My kids had four basketball games yesterday. And I, I love it. It gives me an opportunity to get out and about and be around people. And I was inviting everybody around us to church. I was telling them about how, man, you know, God's working. You can come. And who knows what's, what God, I think they're going to come next week. And my wife, she was like, seeing me talk to all these people she said you are in the zone today aren't you you just keep talking about it and man i love talking about jesus and that's what was going on in john chapter one 
eyewitnesses, people that saw Jesus firsthand, couldn't stop talking about him. They kept telling, we found Jesus coming here, what he's got to say. And how many of you say, man, I want to be like that for Jesus. I'm going to use my mouth for Jesus telling the whole world about his goodness. And so John chapter 1 John chapter 1 was all about people using their voices for Jesus. And then John chapter 2, we see a miracle. We see a miracle. Next slide, please. There we go. Mouths in John chapter 1 were how, was how John helped us believe. We were hearing all these eyewitness testimonies. Mouths. And then John chapter 2, we get to the miracles. And, and John calls them these signs. And he says, in, in the book of John, by the way, we're going to see eight miracles that Jesus did as signs. Plus the keystone miracle of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So there's nine signs that John's going uh, to write out for us in the book of John. And we're going to study all these signs and wonders that point to this fact. You can believe in Jesus because he's God. And he, is, he says he's got all power that you need in your life. So uh, the first miracle is in John chapter 2. That brings us to John chapter 2 today. And it's the miracle where Jesus turned the water into... Very good, you bunch of Bible scholars out there. Jesus turns the water into wine. And uh, we're gonna, like I said, we're going to see other signs, other miracles that's going to build our faith. And that's why John wrote them out. One of them is he raised Lazarus from the dead. We're going to see that one. And then the, the most amazing one is when Jesus resurrects from the dead himself and comes back to life. So join us each week for our study through the book of John. Now, in, in John chapter 2, it reads like this, verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. Let me just tell you about Cana. That's where the first miracle of Jesus occurred. It's about nine miles from the city of Nazareth where Jesus was raised. And so nine miles from Nazareth, Jesus goes to this wedding feast. His mama was there. And uh, it's a small little farming village, okay? So Nazareth was probably 500 people at its apex, the most it had in historical records that we can find. And then, so 500 in Nazareth, just to let you know how little tiny Cana is, about 50 people living in this little village. And there's this major social event, a wedding going on, and Jesus and his disciples and his mama attended the wedding. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, now there's a problem that's going to happen, and it's, it's the wine ran out. Uh, th this, this big wedding feast was a big letdown for people because they're like, the wine ran out. That means they had nothing to drink. Let me put it in their culture, kind of help us understand really what was going on. Um, in that day, water made people sick. When you drank all water all the time, you got parasites like bacteria or, uh, bacteria or something. It was, it was not healthy. They didn't have the filtration system that we have. They didn't have all the chemical treatment that we have in our water today. So their water could make you sick. So they made this really strong wine, and the problem was the, the water could make you sick, but the wine could make you stoned, right? Like you could get wasted, plastered really fast with the wine. What they did to correct all of this, they mixed it together like 50-50, water and wine, and that way people didn't get sick and people didn't get stoned, and they could have something to drink, right? That's why later in the New Testament, Paul wrote to young Timothy and he said, I want you to drink a little wine for your stomach's sake because there's a lot of bugs out there and the wine will help kill that. So the alcohol content really strong, they diluted it so people would have something to drink. All right. And so th when they run out of wine, it's saying a whole lot more than what we would get in our day, in our culture. That means they didn't have anything good to drink at all. Big problem. This was taboo. You think about the chaos at the wedding feast. Here's this little town, and they are having the event of the year, this wedding. And now they don't have anything to drink. It says they have no wine. And Mary goes to Jesus to say, hey, can you help out? Next slide. 
Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim, and he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. And the next slide, it goes on to say in John chapter 2, when the master of the feast tasted the water now that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom, next slide, and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, the poor wine. So normally in that culture, they would serve the good wine first and then, and then their cheap stuff later, right? So that's the way it normally operated. But this guy, the master of the feast, says, hey, this is really awesome what you've done. You, you served the best last. You saved the best for last. And he was happy. And it went from this, like, really big disappointment. Oh, there's no wine. We're all freaking out. To this really great place of, well, this is the best day ever. Jesus showed up and saved the day. But you've kept the good wine until now. Now notice this, okay? This is the first of his signs. Remember I said there's miracles that John is going to write out. This is the first of the miracles that's designed to build our faith. To know that Jesus is all-powerful and Jesus is God. This is the first of his signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed. So initially, John has already seen that these signs and miracles build the faith of the disciples. And they're like, yep, whoa, we've never seen anything like this. Andrew and Peter and James and John were like, whoa, did you see that? That ain't normal, people. And what they went around saying to everybody, we found Jesus. We found not just a carpenter from Nazareth nine miles away. This guy can do anything. He just turned water into wine, and then it spread like wildfire. And 2,000 years later, we're still talking about the signs and wonders and miracles of Jesus Christ. And in the middle of all this, we're going to learn from Mary, the mother of Jesus. Isn't it cool that we're doing this on Mother's Day, learning from Mary, the mother of Jesus? on Mother's Day, and we're going to learn all about talking to Jesus. Talking to Jesus. Now, she'd been talking to Jesus all his life, so she's got some insider information. She's really good at it, and I believe we can learn from this lady and how she was able just to talk directly to Jesus. One of your major concerns as I'm talking about praying right now, you're probably thinking, man, half the time I don't know what to say. I don't know if I'm doing it right. Let me just say, there's no wrong way to do it. There's no bad time to start. Just start talking to Jesus. It's like, you know what? I look at my phone, and I, I can look at the recent calls. And you know who I see on the recent calls a lot? Julie. My wife's name comes up, Julie, 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 Julie. I don't have to look far into my call history to find a call with Julie. I wonder if our talking to Jesus times of prayer were recorded in our call history on our phone. I wonder how far you'd have to dig down into your call history. Would it be a recent call? Would it be a, if you got an iPhone, the best phone, would it be a missed call? You know, you can have that section of your calls and just look at all the missed calls. Has Jesus been dialing your number for some talking to Jesus time? And you've been missing his call? Or would you see on your phone, just asking, okay? I just want to help you today. I'm not here to, like, rub your nose and, oh, you haven't had a call in three days with Jesus. I'm not, I'm not about that. I just want you to know, man, you are missing out if it's not on your recent call history where you've been talking to Jesus. So I got a question for you. On a scale from 1 to 10, let's say 1 is you ain't talked to Jesus in a long, long time, all right? That's what 1 and a five is, hey, every now and then you talk to Jesus, you might have to scroll a couple days. And then on a 10 is like, 10 is you're talking to Jesus. In fact, you just had an hour-long phone call with Jesus, right? How many of you got those phone calls? And you're like, did I really just talk 30 minutes? That was a long time. I want you to talk to Jesus, and Mary's going to help us. The first thing that Mary teaches us about talking to Jesus is Talking to Jesus should be the first response when problems come our way, right? This is what she shows us. When, when they ran out of wine, Mary made a beeline. Let me say that again. When they ran out of wine, 
Mary made a beeline for Jesus. Is that your response when your heart hurts? When you've had a loss in your family? When you get that bill in the mail and you're like, ugh. When you're having a fight with somebody that you love and you wish it could be fixed. You see, when we have a problem, our first response should be like Mary. Mary didn't hesitate. They came to Mary. They said, hey, Mary, did you hear what's going on? There's a problem at the wedding. And by the way, it was a big wedding event. It wasn't like the weddings we have. And by the way, by Jesus going to a wedding, Jesus attended a wedding. By doing that, Jesus puts huge stamp of approval on marriage. Jesus loves marriage. Did you know that? He is all for marriages. He is all for weddings. He supports that 110%. And not only that, we learn from this that Jesus had a social life. <laughs> Jesus was not some recluse that stayed in a cave somewhere. Jesus was mixing and mingling with people because he cared about them. He, he was all the time out on mission trying to be around people because he wanted to care for them. He wanted to help them. And I want all of us to be on mission for Jesus. When you go to the ball game, when you go into your neighborhood and you go to work, when you go to Little League, all, hey, run your mouth for Jesus. So Jesus is there and Mary says, I know what to do. I know exactly what to do. There's a problem. I'm going to make a beeline for Jesus. And here's why. Uh, Mary had never been disappointed with the help that she received from Jesus growing up, right? Okay, so can you imagine just Jesus growing up, by the way, at school? Like, hey, uh, uh, Jesus always got the answers right in class. He knew every answer to the Bible stories, right? He's like, I got this. And then, like, Mary comes to Jesus. Hey, Mary, how many of you ask your kids, by the way, to go borrow some milk from the neighbor or some flour or something like that? How many of you have ever done that? Raise your hand. Hey, can you go to the neighbor? I don't have time to go to the grocery store. Raise your hand. You, you've asked your kid to do something. Maybe you did that as a kid, yeah? Hey, um, I, she says, hey, hey, Jesus, can you run over to the neighbors and get some eggs? I'm out of eggs, and I'm making brownies. And can you go get some eggs from the neighbors? And Jesus is like, well, here you go. <laughs> Here's, bam. Here's a whole dozen of them, Mary. Here, Mama. He, he, he didn't need to borrow any. He's like, bam. Hey, 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 Jesus, we're, we're running low on fish for the family. Can, can you go catch some fish? And he's like, yep, right here. Here you go. Here, here's some salmon from the Atlantic, right? And it's like he didn't even have to go to the Sea of Galilee. He could, he could get fish from anywhere in the world. Oh, you want some dolphin, <laughs> whatever kind of fish you could dream of. I mean, it'd be pretty cool. How many of you think Mary was in awe as a mama talking to Jesus all through his life? And it's no wonder that when there was a problem, she had a beeline. She made a beeline for Jesus. He, he never let her down. So here's the deal. We think that Joseph was dead at this point, right? So Mary's husband, Joseph, is out of the picture the entire earthly ministry from Jesus' 30-year mark to 33 when he died and rose again. We don't see Joseph anymore. Now, he's an outstanding, awesome, stand-up, um, fill-in earthly daddy. Not a real dad for Jesus, but he was the fill-in, right? He, he, was, he was there for Mary. He was a good dad. And he never let him down, but then he kind of disappears during Jesus' as we call him his silent years, the silent years of Jesus from 12 years old all the way to 30 years old. We don't hear anything about Jesus, okay? Somewhere during that time, people died earlier back then. The life expectancy was shorter. Joseph's dead. And in that culture, the oldest son would be the one that had to step up. The oldest son would be the one that now that fatherhood was placed upon you got to care for the family and Jesus was the best fill-in fatherly figure for that family that anyone had ever received and Mary would have to rely on Jesus like hey we need this we need that and, hey hey Jesus what do we do in this situation she always got the right answers you know that that was a hard time for Mary that was, it was a really difficult season when Joseph died no doubt 
But Jesus was there for her. And here's the deal. We learn to talk to Jesus during the hard times, don't we? That's when we learn to talk to Jesus. When life gets hard, it drives us to our knees sometimes. And we learn to talk to Jesus. We get so burdened down, man. I've got this problem. I don't know how I'm going to pay these bills. I've got this loss. I would, man, today's a hard day for people. I saw somebody post this morning on Facebook how much they missed their mom. We just had the celebration of life for this dear lady that attended Compassion for so long. And, and she passed away. And now her daughter is hurting right now. Man, my heart goes out to her. So she posted on, on Facebook today how, you know, how much she missed her. And it was a great tribute. And I felt the pain. I'm there myself. My mom's gone. Maybe today you've got some hurt. You got a problem. I, I talked, one guy texted me yesterday. He said, hey, uh, I'm, I'm hurting right now. I got a problem. There's a spot in my heart that's hurt, and, and, and I tried to encourage him. But, man, you know where we go when, when we have a problem? Mary shows us where to go. We start talking to Jesus as soon as a problem comes into our life. Now, here's what we normally do. We worry about it. We get the bad news, and it punches us in the gut. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You feel like an ulcer erupted in your, in your stomach, and all of a sudden it's like, ah. Oh. And we start worrying about it. We internalize it. We stress over it. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about, please. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. That's not what Mary did. She says, when you have a problem, your first response is not to try to manipulate the situation. How many of you manipulator people out there, do you say, man, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to talk to this person, and I'm going to go to that, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise this amount of money so I can do this, and I'm going to, here's my plan. No. Our first response when problems come our way is to make a beeline for Jesus, right? Talking to Jesus should be our first response when problems come our way. I wonder if anybody out there has got a hurt right now. Raise your hand if you've got a hurt in your life, a sore spot going on, and you can't seem to get over this hurt. It's just there. Ugh. How many of you have a hang-up, something from your past, and it just won't let go of you, and you've got a hang-up from back then, and you're like, oh, you got a problem with your, with your past, a hurt, a hang-up. Maybe you've got a habit. You've got a bad habit, and you can't get over it. What do you do? You start talking to Jesus about it. That's, that's exactly what Mary did, and she's a great example for us. When you find a problem in your life, don't worry over it. You know, somebody said, I worry about everything because I pray about nothing. Ugh. If you worry about everything, chances are you're praying about nothing. Now, I just want to encourage you to stop worrying about it. Just stop trying to fix the situation on your own. Run to Jesus. That's exactly what she did. Mary learned to do this during the hard times of her life. That's when she learned to talk to Jesus. When Joseph died, she learned to go to Jesus for help. And Jesus was always there. Secondly, we learn from Mary, the mama of Jesus, that talking to Jesus unleashes God's power. Not only should we talk to Jesus when there's problems, but we should talk to Jesus when we need a higher power, when it's out of our hands. i got to ask you something. Do you need the power of God for something that's kind of out of your control? That's what Mary realized. She said, hey, guys, I know we're out of this, but I know where to go. I know to go to the power source. Look at John chapter 2 and verse 4. I love this. Jesus said to her, woman... <laughs> Do you see that? It is so loud. Like, hey, woman. And what he is doing is saying, I know you can't do this on your own because you are a woman. But I am God, and I got you. I'm going to be able to figure this out for you. I've got a solution. And she knew that. She says, I know I'm a woman. But you are God in the flesh. And this is the deal. If you need help with something that's out of your control, I ask you right now, hey, raise your hand along with me. There's stuff in my, there's big stuff in my life right now that's out of my control. Okay, Pastor Myron's participating. I'm asking you to participate. Here we go. Something that's out of your control that you need the power of God in. Would you raise your hand? Yes. Look at all these hands. Wow. Woman, man, 
sister, brother. There's a God in heaven who's got the power you need. Just start talking to Jesus like Mary did. Here's an example. And this, this is like the tough, hard things of life. When you've got a problem with somebody, like a relationship problem. I know none of you guys have that in your marriage, right? I know your marriage never has any trouble. Uh, I know that you never have any trouble knowing what to do with your kids when they cock that teenager attitude. Or when your grown parents get on your nerves because you're like, what? I thought you were the parent and you're supposed to know what to do and now you're causing me, what? Now I gotta care for you. <laughs> I, whatever it is, maybe it's, maybe it's that supervisor at work that gets on your nerves so bad you wish they would just quit. But you gotta deal with them. And it's like, I am powerless to penetrate that person's heart. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Like, you've tried to talk, and it's just not landing. Here's what you do. You start talking to Jesus. What he can do, he can penetrate their heart when we can't. And you say, Father in heaven, dear Jesus, please help them to know that I don't hate them and I want to get along. And God, would you soften their heart? Man, that's a good one to pray right there. You see, they, God can do what you can't do. And that's where Mary found herself. Hey, there's water, but there's no wine, and I can't do anything about it. I'm going to have to go to higher power. What's going on in your life right now that you need help with? You can't handle it on your own. You want that person to do this, but you can't make them do it. You can't control it. Go to them. Talking to Jesus unleashes God's power with things that we have no control of. I, I, I told you all a while back, and I'm going to update you right now. In, in our search for a, a new tenant here at the church, like we've been praying for God to provide because we, we, we know that our, our school that leases from us is going to be leaving. And, and by the way, I, I'm not scared a bit, right? We, we're talking to Jesus about it. You all have been talking to Jesus about it. And by the way, God's providing like crazy in ways already. He's already prepared us. We have nothing to fear. And I just want to set your concerns at ease and update you and say, God is providing opportunities. And here's the deal. When you see God's power, he, he comes through in ways that are greater than you could have ever imagined. And today I want to tell you to keep on praying. Keep talking to Jesus about that situation. You're my prayer warriors. We're here together as compassionate church I'm asking you to continue to pray and I'm telling you your prayers are working we're seeing things happen. We, we I can't wait to share with you if everything falls through what's going to happen God's got big plans greater and above and beyond what we could ever imagine or think is the type of God that we tap into when we start talking to Jesus talking to Jesus is our first response when we have a problem Talking to Jesus unleashes God's power. And third, talking to Jesus brings peace to your situation. Peace. You know, something we don't have a lot of in our day, right? It's been a chaotic season. I know some of you have lost family members during this COVID season, right? I know some of you have lost your jobs. There's been a lot of losses during this season. But when you start talking to Jesus, you find peace. And here, let me set the scenario for you, okay? They're at the wedding. And the caterer is like going crazy, right? The caterer's going crazy. Oh, 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 we're out of wine. I'm going to get fired. I'll never get another wedding gig in all my life. The caterer is flipping out. And the wedding planner, she's like, she just went over and jumped off a cliff or something. She's like, oh, no, <laughs> I'm going to get fired. I'm not going to get paid. And, the, and, the, and the, the bride, she's in tears. Her makeup's running. She had her nails done and all that stuff, but now she's a mess, okay? Everything is chaotic, and everybody's freaking out at the wedding. Oh, this is the biggest taboo, terrible thing that could happen, and everybody's scrambling around, and it's chaotic. It's a chaotic mess. Maybe I just painted a picture of some of the problems and junk going on in your world. But Jesus comes along, and when Mary starts talking to Jesus, peace. 
I mean, Jesus says, bam, bam, boom, there's some wine, let's go. Talking to Jesus brings peace to every situation. It is therapeutic. Do you know why? Here's the deal. We were, we're all hardwired with a soul. God created us in his own image with a soul. It's like a transponder deep inside of our being. And that transponder is trying to connect to the right signal, to the heavenly satellite. And when we finally, and it's like we hit a problem and that, that transponder, that soul is like searching for answers and happiness and we're hardwired with that because we need to connect to God to find that peace during life storms and today I want you to know man I've got good news for you if you're going through a problem if your heart is hurting maybe you've got a habit that you can't kick talking to Jesus is going to bring you peace you'll never find it because that transponder, your soul, you can't find it in some substance. You can't find it in crazy, some type of crazy sexual escapade. You can't find it just by success in life. You think, oh man, if I could just get that job, if I could just make that amount of money and do this, I'll be happy and I'll have peace. The only thing that brings us peace is when our soul connects and we start talking to Jesus. So talking to Jesus is our first response to problems. Talking to Jesus unleashes God's power. Talking to Jesus brings us peace that passes all understanding. And then finally, talking to Jesus is essential for parents. Raise your hand if you're a parent. Raise your hand. Yep. Raise your hand if you're a person. <laughs> yeah, just checking. You're awake. Notice what it says here. Talking to Jesus is essential for parents and really all people. We all have a soul that needs to connect. And as a parent, man, we must connect in order to help our kids learn what it's like to be talking to Jesus. I love what happens here in John chapter 2. Most people overlook it when they're studying the life of Jesus Christ. But it's like one of my favorite verses these days. Because i got four little kids walking behind me. And as a dad, I want to set a trail. I want to blaze a trail straight to heaven, straight to Jesus. I, I don't want them to look and, and have, like, some questions about which way to go. I want them to know, Dad is on the straight and narrow. I'm going to follow Jesus. I want to help them to learn all about talking to Jesus. And, and that's going to take time, spending time with them. I, I want to encourage you, hey, you may be busy in life, but you're not more busy than Jesus was. Jesus came to save the world. How many of you think saving the world was a big job? Raise your hand if you think saving the world was a big job. But look what he took time to do in verse 12. This is amazing. After this, he went down to Capernaum. That's by the sea. So he said, hey, let's go down by the seaside, family. And do some family time. A little bit of vacay. And he went to Capernaum with his mother and his brothers. He went with his family. I love this about Jesus. Jesus said family is really, really important. He shouts it loud and clear today. Spend time with your family. Moms, make time for Junior and for little Sally. And make sure that you... You get them together, and most of all, make sure they know what talking to Jesus looks like. It says, and they stayed there for a few days. Hey, never feel bad about taking time off for your family. Make it a priority like Jesus did. Any parents out there say, man, more than anything. And I, I, I know you're not hearing this out there at your job, probably. You're not probably hearing this on, on the news or in your scroll, in your feed. But let me say this today. As parents, God is calling us to be with our kids, to take time with them so that we can teach them to talk to Jesus. That's our goal in life as parents. Every night... Uh, I try to spend a little time with each of the kids and pray with them, maybe answer a question for Cohen, pour into their little hearts. Like, we pray at night. In the morning, Julie and I, we do a little Bible devotion. She'll do one day. We alternate each day in the morning. And we just read them a little bit from a... And, you know, it's, 
It's something we want to do because we want our kids to learn all about talking to Jesus. We want to make time for that. Uh, I'm really blessed uh, with a mom that uh, that's in heaven now, but she was all about talking to Jesus. She taught me how to talk to Jesus. Every night she came in my room. She's the best. She's better at this than me, to be honest. Uh, I, I would beg her, hey, mom, just stay a little longer. And I'd wrap her arm around me tight and drift off to sleep that way. But she would quote me Bible verse. She didn't have to read it. She would quote the Bible to me. And every night she'd pray with me. She's a prayer warrior, just awesome. And uh, I was going through some pictures since Mother's Day, and I, I got a couple pictures here. There's my mom. A dear man, I, I, uh, I couldn't have asked for, I know some of you didn't grow up with a mom that taught you about talking to Jesus. The truth is you can be that type of person for someone. Uh, Another picture I wanted to show. Sorry for the distortion, but these are oldie goldie pictures. There's my mom standing up, and you can't see me hardly, but she's smiling at me. I'm the little kid down there who's already eaten the cupcake that's on the top. I've eaten the top of the cu cupcake off, it looks like. I was looking at the picture, and uh, this was in our old church basement. My dad started a church, small church, and this picture is priceless to me. My mom, she used to make me go Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday nights. Made me get dressed up in some khakis and a polo shirt, go to church dressed up. How many of you remember those days? <laughs> this was in Sunday school. I remember she had a snack, maybe vacation Bible school. She's teaching, teaching the Bible. Hey, parents, moms, dads. You'll never regret, you'll never regret talking to Jesus with your kids. It's what we were made and destined to do, is to be able to spend time with them, teaching them all about talking to Jesus. And I, I was in my office this week. Uh, I, I looked at these and I, I lost it, right? <laughs> I know some of you have had some hard times, and my heart's with you. I, my heart breaks with you because I know what you're feeling right now. My, my face began to melt like I cried, ugly face cry a thousand times. Like, I couldn't stop. I, I'm still grieving, right? Like, it hadn't been that long ago. My mom died on my birthday. She didn't just, she didn't just die. She died on my birthday. It wasn't just on my birthday. It was like right after midnight. <laughs> my mom died, and I... It was really hard, I'll just be honest with you. Uh, it's been hard ever since. God's helped me with it. I'm not blaming God, I'm happy about her being in heaven. I, uh, uh, I text Julie, I was so embarrassed. Like, uh, uh, I just went in my office and closed the door. Jared tried to come help me, I said, no, I can't. Jared, I don't, I can't, I'm a dude, right? Like, I don't want anybody to see me crying. I was, uh, said, we'll talk later. Thank you, bro. I love you, dude. I text Julie, and I said, uh, one thing that kept, kept hitting me that day is, like, I was so young when I lost my mom. I was up here on the front row with Evan singing, and I said, man, I wish I could be in church with my mom. Isn't it cool that you can be with mom today? <sighs> say, why are you saying all this? I'm up here talking about my mom today. It's been years since, you know, I, I, did, I lost her early. When I was about 30 years old, mom started having dementia, and it's been downhill ever, it was downhill ever since. But she left a legacy of talking to Jesus. Her prayers go before me to this day. And what I thought I'd do by sharing this personal stuff with you about my mom is maybe it would ignite a fire in you to be that for someone. I want to encourage you. I want to be, teach your kids all about talking to Jesus. It's the most important impact you could ever make on any person on planet Earth. Make it your goal in life to 
pour into somebody. Help them talk into Jesus. I know there's some people here today and you're hurting. My heart does break for you. I want to tell you, talking to Jesus should be our first response when we have problems. Talking to Jesus unleashes God's power. Talking to Jesus brings peace. Anybody need some peace in their soul? It's chaotic, like at that wedding. Like there's problems, there's stuff going on. It's dramatic. Oh, no, what are we going to do? Talking to Jesus brings peace. And talking to Jesus is essential for all people, including us parents. And so today, I thought it would be really awesome if we sang about talking to Jesus. There's no wrong way to do it. Did you know that? You're like, I don't even know where to start. You can't go wrong if with a humble heart you just start talking to Jesus. There's no wrong way to do it. Get this. There's no wrong time to start. There's not a bad time to start talking to Jesus. Maybe you've been away for a while and your heart's kind of drifted. There's no bad time to start. In fact, right now would be a great time. The number one most best time ever for you to start talking to Jesus is right now. There's no wrong way to do it. There's no bad time to start. So start talking to Jesus right now. Let's stand up. Let's stand up and start talking to Jesus. How many of you say, yeah, I'm going to start talking to Jesus. figure out the questions in life and I've been looking for a way to show him how to make it all right then he walked in my room while I was saying my prayers the other night he said I'll come back later I can tell you got a lot on your it's not an interruption You couldn't have picked a better time Cause I was 
start talking to Jesus in this moment. You don't have to wait. There's no wrong way to do it. There's no bad time to start. Let's start talking to Jesus in this moment. And, and maybe right now you'd like to bow your head. You don't even have to do that. You just want to start talking in your soul to Jesus. And maybe you'd like to talk to him for the very first time today as far as really committing your life to Jesus Christ. We had some people in the first service, they said yes to Jesus. They started talking to Jesus. Maybe you'd like to do that right now. And if you want to start talking to Jesus, you want to give your life to Jesus, then right now, would you pray this? I'll help you start talking to Jesus. You can say this. Here it is. Would you repeat this in your soul? You can say it quietly. You can say it out loud. Whether you're at home tuning in online in your living room or here in the auditorium would you start talking to Jesus here it is would you pray this say dear Jesus please forgive me for my sins I'm sorry I want you in my life I need you in my life Jesus dear Jesus I believe in you I know you died for me you rose again. Dear Jesus, save my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, I, I'm just so thankful that some people right now probably just started talking to Jesus. If you started talking to Jesus right then, would you raise your hand all across the other? Would you hold it up really loud, really high? I mean, yeah, let's praise God for that right there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, let's keep talking to Jesus just for a moment right here. Let's continue to sing out and talk to Jesus together. Come on, let's lift this up to our God. What a friend we have in Jesus. 
said yes today, I want to challenge you right now to take out the connection card on the back of the seat in front of you and fill that out or text uh, this right here on the screen. Text this follow to the number right there. We would love to follow up with you and just help walk you through the what's next after you say yes to Jesus, after you start talking to Jesus. So thank you so much for being here. Mothers, thank you so much for the amazing moms we have here at Compassion Church. Happy Mother's Day. Go get a free coffee. God bless you. And we'll see you back here next Sunday for our brand new series on Hinder. Have a great Sunday.